AMD is finally launching their Ryzen 7000 series X3D processors, and they are claiming that this uh, Ryzen 9 7950 X3D should be the absolute fastest gaming CPU that money can buy while using less power than its direct competitors, which is a pretty big claim to make. So we spent the last couple of weeks testing it in 25 different games on three different resolutions, and in this video I'm going to talk about how well it performs in games, as well as when it comes to productivity, and how power efficient it actually is. Let's begin. The new X3D processors are in many ways similar to the existing 7000X processors with one big difference. The X3D comes with a big chunk of AMD 3D vCache. Now they did this with the previous generation Ryzen 7 5800X3D and it turned out that extra cache can really help to improve gaming performance specifically. So now they're adding the same thing to the Ryzen 9 models as well. But the interesting thing here is that while Ryzen 7 5800X3D only had one block of 8 cores, this Ryzen 9 chip comes with two core complexes that have 8 cores each, and the 3D vCache is only added to one of those, so it has an asymmetric design. And the idea behind this is that one half of the chip will benefit all those games and apps that prefer a lot of cache, while the other half will deal with games and apps that prefer a higher frequency instead, so you basically get the best of both worlds. Other than the extra cache, the differences are actually quite small. It is still a 16 core 32 thread CPU, uh, the theoretical boost clocks are the same, and it is also built on the same 5 nanometer process. However, the TDP of the X3D chip is actually much lower. The X3D has a TDP of 120 watts, which is much less than the 170 watts on the 7950X, and it is also half of the TDP of the i9-3900K. But I will talk about the actual power consumption a bit later in this video, because I want to talk about the performance first. I will be comparing this uh, 7950X3D to the Ryzen 9 7950X, as well as the i9-3900K from Intel. And to keep it fair, we made sure that the AMD and Intel test benches are as comparable as possible, and everything was tested and retested using the latest drivers and game updates. Uh, if you want to know more about the systems or other testing conditions, I will leave all the details in the description of this video, and you can go ahead and check it out. So let's start with some pure CPU benchmarks. In Cinebench R23, the 7950X3D has slightly improved performance compared to the 7950X in a single-threaded test, but AMD is still behind Intel here. But in the multi-threaded test, the new X3D is actually a little bit slower than both, which is what AMD said in their own presentation as well. But in a real render workload, the impact of that difference is actually quite small. So in a short one minute render, it is only about three seconds slower than the 7950X and five seconds slower than the i9. And in a slightly longer render, AMD starts to pull ahead. The i9 is now 20 seconds behind both AMD chips, with the 7950X holding on to a very small lead. So in terms of productivity, the X3D doesn't change that much. But this CPU was made with gaming in mind, so let's see how it does in games. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is a notoriously CPU-heavy game, the 7950X3D starts off really well. Average frame rates are much better than on the 7950X, and it is beating the i9-3900K as well. 1% uh, lows, which you can see in the brackets, aren't that much better, but it is still an improvement overall. Watch Dogs Legion seems to really benefit from the 3D cache as well, uh, showing more than 30% of an improvement over both the older AMD chip and the i9 on 1080p. But even on high resolutions that are more GPU bound, we can see a significant benefit here. Far Cry 6 shows the same story. Uh, we see huge gains on 1080p, 1440p, and even 4K resolution compared to both other CPUs. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has the old 7950X behind Intel by quite a margin, but the X3D overtakes it on both 1080p and 1440p. Intel does hold up better on 4K resolution. In Borderlands 3, the things look more like I would expect them to beforehand. There is a nice improvement on 1080p, but as the resolution goes up, the GPU becomes the bottleneck here. Still, it was enough to beat the 3900K on all three resolutions. 
Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that really favored Intel in the past. I mean, you can see the gaps between the i9 and the 7950X, but the X3D has improved that performance by a lot, making AMD way more competitive in this title, even if Intel is still ahead by a little bit. Outriders uh, shows another nice win for AMD, especially at low resolutions where it beats the i9 easily. On 4K though, it is basically a tie. And it is about the same in World War Z. We see some improvements on 1080p and 1440p and a small improvement on 4K, which does result in AMD looking better overall. The Division 2 is another game that really preferred Intel before, but the X3D really improved things for AMD, especially on 1080p and 1440p. Intel does have a small win on 4K, but AMD does go from a clear loss to a clear win in this title. Rainbow Six Siege is a game that actually preferred Ryzen already, and this X3D just takes it up a notch. Uh, not that it matters much, given the crazy high frame rates, but if you're really into this game, I guess you will be ready for a 480Hz gaming monitor. Spider-Man Remastered also clearly favored Intel, and the X3D yet again closed that gap to a more reasonable amount, even if Intel still wins overall, especially when it comes to 1% lows. Gotham Knights is an unoptimized mess of a game and AMD was really struggling here before, but once again, the X3D is able to bring performance back in line with its Intel competitor. In Dirt 5, AMD also improved their lead on 1080p and 1440p resolutions, with the 1% lows in particular being a notable improvement over Intel. Formula 1 2022 shows a much smaller difference overall. There is an okay improvement at 1080p, but it's very close on 1440p and 4K resolutions, where the X3D is actually behind the 7950X and the 13900K. In Tiny Tina Wonderlands, uh, all three CPUs are really close. Uh, Intel's 1% lows on 1080p are worth pointing out, but other than that, you won't really notice a real difference between any of these results. Troy Total War also shows pretty minor improvements. Uh, there's a small gain on lower resolutions, uh, partially closing the gap with Intel, but it is not as big as in some other games. Assassin's Creed Valhalla shows the same story. Uh, there are some small gains, but it does help AMD get in line with Intel instead of being behind it. And in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we barely see any gain at all, and Intel is still ahead across all three resolutions. Dying Light 2 is interesting because it only shows small gains in average FPS, but the 1% lows are actually significantly better on 1080p and 1440p. Wolfenstein Youngblood is another somewhat boring result. Uh, there is a small improvement on 1080p, but there are no real differences on 1440p and 4K resolution. Just like in Dying Light 2, uh, God of War also stands out because of the improved 1% lows on lower resolutions, even if the average frame rate is either the same or lower than on the 7950X. Anno 1800 doesn't seem to benefit from the Vcache at all, showing very similar numbers, but it is still ahead of the 3900K on all three resolutions. Red Dead Redemption 2 also doesn't seem to care about cache much, with once again pretty similar results as before. And while most games have shown some form of an improvement, uh, this isn't the case for every game I've tested. Uh, Doom Eternal is one example where the X3D simply performs worse than the 7950X, which was already behind the 13900K. And CSGO is an even worse example where the X3D is actually behind the 7950X by almost 10%. Then again, with these frame rates, it doesn't really matter that much. But let's merge all this into a nice summary per resolution. So if I compare the 7950X3D to the 7950X on 1080p resolution, the new processor looks pretty impressive. It is faster in 20 out of 25 titles, with 12 of them showing a significant win of 10% or more. It is technically slower in four games, but the only significant loss is in CSGO, which still runs extreme frame rates. On average, the X3D is about 11% faster. I know that a lot of CPU tests focus only on 1080p resolution, but with current generation of GPUs, uh, many games are held back by CPU performance, even on 1440p. Uh, 18 out of 25 games show an improvement with the X3D, with 10 games showing a difference of 10% or more. I mean, 
Seeing games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Flight Simulator gain 25% FPS on this resolution just by changing the CPU is pretty impressive. Overall, the X3D is 8.4% ahead of the 7950X. On 4K resolution, things are a little bit more balanced between the two, but uh, five games do show a significant win of 5% or more, while the 7950X only has one win of more than 5%. On average, the X3D is ahead by 1.4%, which is technically a win, but you still shouldn't expect that extra cash will change that much on this resolution. Compared to the 3900K on 1080p, it does get quite close, but it is still a win for AMD overall. The 7950X3D wins in 14 out of 25 games, with 11 games by 5% or more. Uh, meanwhile, Intel wins in 11 games, and in 7 of those, by 5% or more. Now that puts AMD ahead by 4.4% on average across 25 games I've tested. On 1440p, AMD again beats Intel in 14 out of 25 games, and in 10 of those by 5% or more. Meanwhile, Intel wins in 10 titles, but only in 3 of those by 5% or more. On average, AMD is ahead by 3.6%, which is not a huge margin, but still not bad for 1440p resolution. On 4K though, the graph flips slightly in Intel's favor. Both CPUs have five games where they win by 5% or more, but now Intel does have a slight advantage in the majority of games. That 20% gap in Far Cry 6 does help AMD to keep the average up, which leaves a teeny tiny gap of only 0.2% between the two CPUs, which is practically a draw. But this is where it gets really interesting. Looking at the CPU power consumption when gaming, uh, starting with 4K resolution where performance is very similar between the three CPUs, the new 7950X3D is significantly more efficient. It was using only 85 watts of power on average compared to the 122 watts for the 7950X and 132 watts for the 13900K. And this is in a very GPU heavy scenario. On 1080p, where uh, we are more CPU bottlenecked, that gap becomes really big. Now, technically, the 3900K is outputting a few frames more in this particular title, but it is also using 185 watts to do so compared to the 99 watts on the 7950X3D, and that is a ridiculous power difference for a very similar performance. Even compared to the 7950X, the X3D manages to offer a lot more FPS while using about 35 watts less. And that power consumption carries over into non-gaming tasks as well. Uh, if we look at that render benchmark again, they look relatively similar. However, the X3D does this with an average power draw of 144 watts, which is 84 watts less than the 7950X for similar performance, and about half the power draw of the 3900K while being faster. Less power also means less heat. Uh, when fully stressed, the 7950X was averaging at 91 degrees Celsius, the 3900K was at 94 degrees average, while the new X3D was at much more comfortable 75 degree average. And that is again a huge difference. So the X3D is much more efficient than the other two. But that doesn't seem to be the case when it comes to idle power consumption. Uh, when the bench was doing absolutely nothing for a long time, both AMD CPUs continued to draw a lot more power than the i9. And this was not a reporting mistake, uh, we measured the difference straight from the wall and we did it several times as well. Now, this might be an issue with certain motherboards for example, so we also went ahead and retested it with a Gigabyte motherboard instead of the Asus one, and this did show some better results for AMD, but it was still using a bit over 10 watts more than the Intel chip in idle. That being said, it is totally possible that AMD can somehow fix this with an update, or that another BIOS update might help with certain motherboards, but for now, for right now, the idle power use is definitely something to think about, especially if you're using your PC a lot during the day for that basic office use. But at the end of the day, I do think that the 7950X3D comes out pretty strong. It is definitely an upgrade over the 7950X, and it is faster than the 3900K on average in basically everything except for 4K gaming, where they are actually tied. 
I still don't think anyone that already owns a 7950X or 3900K should just run to the store to buy this one. But if you were waiting for it to come out before you got an upgrade, it is definitely a very strong option. But the price also needs to play a part here. On paper, the MSRP is set to $699, which matches the MSRP of the 7950X. And if they cost the same, the X3D here is the obvious choice. But in actual shops, the price of the 7950X is much lower, uh, costing about the same as the 3900K. So for now, you really need to think about all these differences and decide how much more you're willing to pay for it and how much would it benefit your particular case. That being said, I do expect that the X3D will be more expensive at launch, but the price should go down over time. We also have to factor in platform costs as well. Uh, nowadays, you can actually buy a decent B650 motherboard for about $200 or so, or an X670E for a bit more than that. And even though it only supports more expensive DDR5 memory, the price of DDR5 continues to drop down as well. So for a high-end CPU like this one, I don't think the platform costs are that much of an issue like they were half a year ago. Technically, the Z790 boards for an Intel system are still a little bit cheaper in most regions, but seeing how with an Intel motherboard you can pretty much forget about future CPU upgrades, while AMD here has promised to continue to use the same AM5 platform to at least 2025, I think, I do think that a small price premium for the CPU and the motherboard combination is completely justified here. And you can also probably save that difference on cooling because the i9 basically needs a big 360 millimeter all-in-one cooler to keep it running, while a good mid-range air cooler will be more than enough for this 7950X3D. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new Dominator Platinum RGB memory. These super fast DDR5 6000 Hz memory kits are specifically made for Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. They feature a stylish aluminum heat spreader with DHX technology that keeps them nice and cool under load, offering a smooth and stable performance with a lot of room for overclocking. And they come with 12 customizable Capellix LEDs that you can control with their IQ software and easily sync up with your other Corsair components. Check them out using the links in the description below. And this is where I will leave it for today. I really hope you enjoy this review. Uh, I'm very sorry for making it this long, but I hope all this data was at least interesting enough and helpful enough. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.